In this video, we're going to be working on something that is much different than what I'm used to working on, a Detroit Series 60 engine. And the customer said he's had really low oil pressure, so he wanted me to help him change the main and rod bearings. And what I found with the mains is something that I have never seen before. Hey guys, Josh with Babe Channel, and we are back at it, folks. What are we working on today? Well, a Detroit. I don't even know what we're exactly doing. I think I'm doing mains and rods, or I'm helping someone do main and rod bearings on it. Should be interesting. Apparently, they're pretty messed up. Uh, let's go take a look at it. So this is the engine here. This is a 60 series, and apparently this is the larger displacement one. I guess they made most of them are 12 liters. This is a 14 liter, I'm assuming it's iron horsepower. I actually helped him do the overhead uh, adjustment on this, which first time of only and only time I've ever done. Kind of weird because they run two rockers instead of a bridge. So there's four valves per cylinder but there's four rockers per cylinder, kind of weird. So getting underneath here, he had pulled number five main off to look at it. And uh, I'm gonna show you that here in a little bit, but it's looking from underneath, if this thing was painted yellow, not a ton of differences, just looking at the rotating assembly design of the uh, oil pump there. But let's look at, so this is the main, the lower on number five. And as you can see, looks pretty bad, but his concern, and look at that, just says standard on there, a part number, but no manufacturer. His concern was, look at how it sits in the cap. Have you ever seen that before? I've never seen this before, unless it was spun or something, but this wasn't spun at all. It, uh, it literally just fell off the cap once it was installed there. I don't know what the heck's going on. As you can see, not a tight fit at all, which is not correct i don't know what's going on there now he had bought all new factory bearings which uh i think that's a pretty wise decision as you can see the the detroit ones have a lot more information other than just a part number as detroit symbol i'm um, guessing this is some sort of manufacturing stamps for dates or what batch it was or something like that but underneath this thing getting ready to pull the pickup tube I see a lot of similarities between a cat here so the sump tube runs right into the block, right around cylinder three. This one has a gasket though. Um, yeah, it's driven off the front, gear driven. A lot of similarities there. This is a two bolt rod style. I guess it's, it's actually two nuts. They use these 12 pointed style nuts. I guess those are not supposed to be reused. A lot of similarities here. Uh, I see between a cat not saying they copied them. This might just be really standard. Uh, looks like they factory stamp You might not be able to see it the rods on the side. It's not just etched. It actually says three Four so that's kind of cool Gonna be checking the rods and the mains uh, Gonna see not Sure what order we're gonna do my guess is I'd probably pull Probably gonna pull a few mains and then probably do all the rods, put the rods back on, do the mains, then do the other parts of the mains would be my guess, so yeah. Got Mr. Oil Pump out of the way here. What in the world is this thing? Is it some sort of pressure relief? It just bolts to the block and then just has like a dump. It says regulator, so. Something weird. Uh, never seen that before, but you know, different manufacturer. Different stuff. So, yeah, I'm not sure what order I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a look, just make sure I don't see anything with a spun bearing or anything with the way that one was sitting uh, in the carrier. It's really weird. So, um, start to assemble and go from there. Now he'd already pulled off number five cap and rolled the upper out. And I said, you know what, I'll just start there on six. And unlike a cat where number four, which is the center main, has the thrust bearings, these use number six. And you can actually see the thrust on the bottom of the cap here. I can't see it from this angle, but they're there. So I decided I'll start here and remove that cap. So 
So once the cap bolts are out there, and yes, it is good to know that even on a Detroit, the main bolt oil still stinks and has the exact same smell as every other engine main bolts I've ever worked on. Why do they do that? This is uh, the owner of the truck right here. And I cannot get the cap off. I've never had a main cap be so difficult to remove. I believe the reason it's so difficult is because this has the thrust bearings on it. Now it has, you might be saying, well, Josh, the thrusts are just on the top. Well, no, no, they aren't. They, there are thrust bearings on the upper part of the main bolt or uh, bearing, but there's also thrust bearings on the lower part, which haven't seen that before. But yeah, it, you couldn't wiggle the cap out. I'm not sure. You guys have a special way to get that out of there. This is sped up uh, significantly here, you can see. But yeah, this, it took a long time. But persistence paid off and we got it out of there. Very weird design here. I'll be showing the, uh, the, the design, which is quite unusual for the thrust bearings they use on this. And we'll be talking about that a little more later. But uh, before we get to that, we just wanted to get that out. I had to get the upper out, take a look at that, take a look at the bearing, because this one was pretty messed up. You're going to want to definitely see what that lower main looked like. And uh, we're just using a trick here. Someone had told me to use a copper pipe that's flattened because uh, copper is softer than steel to roll these bearings out. Not sure if it's really the best way, but it worked pretty good. Uh, it gets really good contact for tapping that out of there and uh, no real risk of scratching the, the crank journal that way. So how about a little destruction of the week? This week's destruction of the week is actually this engine. So these are the thrust bearings, as you can see. There's actually four of them, two on the lower, two on the upper. And you can kind of see uh, what what the destruction of the week is. That's the upper there. Uses a different bearing for these weird thrusts that are, it's a th like a three-piece bearing. Not sure of the logic on that. Look at the lower bearing. What in the world? I have seen damaged bearings, folks. I've seen them with rust on them. I've seen them spun. This one is not spun. It was in it was in the cap. It was in the journal, not spun. It's super loose in the cap. I'm only assuming the only thing holding in there was just the upper bearing was keeping it pressed in there, but literally it was just peeling apart. It's like they used super cheap bearing material and just paint it over it. I, I don't know why these are disintegrating like that. No manufacturer uh, information on there, but man, I, I just, I've never seen a bearing come apart like that. So that probably leads you to think, man, that crank must be just toasted for the bearing to look like that. Surprisingly, uh, no. Look at the journal. All of the journals on this engine look Perfect, pristine, not a scratch or groove on them. I'm super surprised by the, uh, I guess, nice uh, finish still left on the crank there. Now, checking the rods, I figured the rods would be in really bad shape too, or the rod bearings, because of course the rod bearings are fed oil from the mains, just like just like a cat engine. I'm not saying they invented it, just saying that's how they are. Uh, we're also replacing the rod bolts, which are actually a T-bolt stud, and they're kind of pressed into the cap. Since the head's on, we have to remove them in place. So basically what I was doing, I was just putting the nut back on, we're replacing the uh, T-bolt and the nut so I was lucky I didn't know if we'd have to press them out which I have no idea how you would do in chassis without some weird specialty tooling and yeah I just used a hammer and I was able to tap them out in a few hits I was using a dead blow uh, I got one of them out that way but yeah I had to use a hard-faced hammer there to get the other ones out 
Just was real careful, though, not to let the rod jump all over the place and potentially bend a cooling jet or something like that. So just giving a little, little brake clean bath there to get all the old nasty oil out of there. And then going to put the new rod bearings in. So this, uh, uh, never mind the... Uh, helpful barbecue sauce assembly lubricant there folks so this is the upper main bearing on number six it's three piece as you can see i mean the the main itself is one piece but it's a special bearing and it has these grooves cut into it so that the thrust bearings can be installed in such a way that they kind of roll in and th this was not easy i thought they would actually fall out while trying to install them i actually didn't fall out i got it in there one in one go the hardest part was there's a very little gap to push these bearings and roll the upper end at the same time so that was a total pain in the butt now they recommend this detroit uh, assembly compound which i I'm, it's some sort of anti seize i don't know what it is like a lithium based or something but yeah, it's white. Interesting. You know, folks, there's that phrase like, tell me you're doing something without telling me you're doing something. How could I tell that I'm doing main bearings? No idea. It's weird, though. Have you ever seen the mains like that before? I mean, I'm, you've seen damaged mains, but to be shrunk or distorted like that? What the heck caused it? I've never seen one like that before. It's really weird. It's not all of them either. They're all worn, but to have them loose, it's super strange. It's surprising they didn't spin, but um, have you guys seen that before? Maybe have, maybe haven't. Um, it's also cool, the similarities between the cats. Surprisingly similar. I don't know, uh, you know, I haven't built a lot of non-cat engines, but difference between this and a C-15, not very much. Even the oil pump design and all that stuff. Very similar, uh, very good in my opinion, very easy to work on. So haven't worked on a ton of Detroits. I've done the overhead on this one or helped him do the overhead. Only ever overhead I've done on a Detroit, but pretty cool engine actually. Not saying I'll never work on one again, but you know, something different. Now as far as installation goes, just like C13, C7, any of the CAT engines, it's you put the cap on with the bearing, make sure it's in the right location. These are factory stamped and the, there's no front it doesn't say front or rear but i've noticed all of the detroit marking at part numbers on the main caps uh face forward which is the fan side or the gear train side of the engine so yeah just trying to put it in place there these were quite difficult to get in place on some of them i couldn't actually press some of them in by hand so i was using a uh, dead blow kind of to seat a couple of them uh, i was quite careful but they all seated fine uh, luckily the customer was there helping me and that actually made it go pretty quick here because while I was cleaning journals or prepping or torquing he was cleaning the other main caps or getting the bolts ready or handing me whatever I needed so really made it easy uh, well I don't want to say easy though doing mains and rods is not an easy job no matter who's helping you but uh, a lot easier with someone helping there so we are getting that puppy on there what i did is i just ran them down with the impact at the lowest setting and then we're going to torque them after i get all the caps done so yeah that's seated and i usually try to feel the seam just to make sure there's no big gap between the cap and the block there definitely don't want to have a inch gap between the cap and the block when you're installing your main bearings so we have our, you can see all the rods. So the rods and rod nuts have been replaced. Those were all torqued. I was going by, so he supplied all the parts. And in general, I always have the customers supply their own parts. But he supplied all his own parts, and he had the manual, because I don't have access to any sort of Detroit information. I'm sure I could find some online. And we went, uh, apparently these rod nuts torqued to about 125 foot-pounds. No torque turn, which was kind of nice. I, you know, torque turns is nice that you can use an impact, but it, just a straight torque is easier, in my opinion, as far as just setting it. 
Now the, the main caps though, they torqued to 360 according to the literature he had. So that was pretty difficult. Luckily there were two of us there, so I was holding it in place and moving it, and then he was torquing it. And it was, uh, it would have been quite difficult to do by myself. Not impossible uh, without, since we can't use an impact, it's just a torque reading, it's not a torque turn. Definitely really helped. Uh, Basically, it would have been like torque in a cylinder head, except upside down trying to hold the torque wrench up, which that doesn't sound very fun. Luckily, there's only 14 total bolts, though, with the seven caps. A super interesting job. Like I said, I haven't done a Detroit before, other than the overhead, and that was on the same engine. But it was interesting to see the similarities, some of the differences, and he's still waiting on a couple parts before he can finish putting the oil pan back on. And I think he was going to change the rec regulator, that weird tube that was sitting under number three main. And there's also a uh, pressure relief valve that's actually in the sump supply tube from the oil pump. So I know on cats, they usually have a regulator in the filter housing or in the oil pump itself. But on the Detroit, they run them in the tubes there, which if you have the oil pan off, makes it easy. But if the pan's on... Um, that would not be very easy. So, yeah, we're just finished torquing on the rest of the bolts here. We rotated around after just to make sure everything seemed to operate normal. It had end play. Not as much as a cat, seemingly, but it, it wasn't locked up, obviously. That would have been bad. But, yeah, it was a fun job. I wouldn't want to do it every single day, but something different. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And, as always, thanks for watching.